Welcome to this video on searching for letters in the music library. This video covers an introduction to primary sources in music, an introduction on how to use letters for music research, and how to find published letters in the music library. Primary sources bring a unique perspective to historical research. The Library of Congress describes primary sources as the raw material of history, original documents and objects which were created at the time under study. When you incorporate primary sources into a research paper, they can serve as that raw material that you'll analyze and synthesize in order to answer your research question, and they can form key pieces of evidence in your paper's argument. Let's compare primary sources with other types of sources. Primary sources are documents or objects that were written or created at the time that you're studying. They represent original thinking, new discoveries, or new information collected during the time of an event. Examples of primary sources include things like photographs, interviews, manuscripts, live performances, and letters. We can compare these to secondary sources. Secondary sources provide an interpretation of the past based on primary source materials. They analyze or interpret primary sources and are one or more steps removed from a historical event. A secondary source might also be an interpretation of creative work. Examples of secondary sources include articles, books, and works of analysis. Even further removed are tertiary sources, these are summaries of primary and secondary sources. Examples of these include encyclopedias, lists, annotated bibliographies, and collections such as catalogs. In music, examples of primary sources include journals and letters, musical instruments, music manuscripts, early printed editions of compositions, performances, and concert reviews. Primary sources, including letters, offer useful context and insight into a historical time period. These are essentially windows into the thinking of an individual using a first-person lens. For example, the letter you can see in this slide is written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Uh, Mozart's letters capture information about his relationships with his family, friends, and the music community. There are reflections of his work as a composer, and they tell us a little bit about the day-to-day -day life at the time that he lived in the 1700s. Reading Mozart's words allows us to hear his voice more directly than if we were to read about him in a book or a journal article. Examinations of letters and journals allow us to examine unique and sometimes profoundly personal documents. This can give us a very real sense of what it was like to be alive during a past era. Primary sources allow us to find evidence that might reveal information about the context that the composer lived in, and by extension, some of the influences on that person's work or compositions. Sometimes letters will reference specific compositions directly, well, in other cases, you might have to infer the context of a composition by matching the time that a letter was written with its proximity to the composition date of the piece that you're studying. As many of these letters are written in languages other than English, and deciphering handwriting can be challenging, we're lucky that many letters and journals have been translated and published in printed book form. We have some of these in the library. When you're searching for letters, you'll need to use the term correspondence in the library catalog. Let's take a quick look at how to construct a search for Mozart's letters in the library catalog now. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate a search for Mozart's letters. I'll start at the library homepage at library.usask.ca and then navigate to the library catalog by using this link at the center of the page. Once I'm here, I'll go to the advanced search using the link at the right side of the page. I'll construct my search. So we are going to search for Mozart as an author. And as a subject, I'm going to enter correspondence and then click go. You can see this uh, pulls up six results. And if we scroll down, you'll find a couple books here that look like they might be useful. I'll just open up this one that's titled Mozart's Letters, Mozart's Life. And if we open it up, we can see that it's in the Education Library, and you can request this item for pickup by clicking on the blue button at the top of the page. This video introduced you to some examples of primary sources in music, how you might want to use letters for your music research, and how to find published letters using the library catalog.